hey, if you remember last time we spoke, um, my QNAP NAS basically, you know, went out to pasture. It died. I sent it off to get repaired. But again, uh, thing dying twice in one year, I've kind of lost confidence in it as much as I really like the device. I like the way it works. So I took that as an opportunity to set out to build a, uh, a new home NAS, uh, primarily for backup purposes, uh, but also to serve as a multi-purpose server. Um, and I had one requirement. I wanted to do this as cheap as possible. Now there's a lot of things I could do different to make it more of a robust server, and maybe I'll get to that at some point. But I wanted to see how cheap I could build a system that would be comparable in functionality to what I had, and perhaps even more powerful. So that's kind of where we're starting with this. I picked up all the components. We're gonna go over what those components are, and I'll talk about uh, a little bit why I chose the ones I did. And mostly it came down to price. And then what we're gonna do in a subsequent video is we're gonna go through the assembly process and, uh, and the software installation and getting it up and running. And we'll see how, how my homebrew NAS uh, compares to, uh, to the QNAP I had. Now one other decision that has to be made before we actually finish out the construction, the hardware is easy, we've got all the components ready to build it out, is what operating system do we use? So I've actually narrowed down my choices to three different, um, three different operating systems. Uh, the first one is Windows Server 2012, which is typically not a choice most people want to use with NAS, and that's mostly because of the cost. Uh, Windows Server is a very expensive operating system to run. It's typically used for small businesses, not necessarily for home office. Uh, I happen to have a license for it, so it's already purchased, I can run it. Uh, if I did that, it would be because I want to run other things on it, such as a SQL server. Um, and I might install it just to experiment. I want to sort of see how the performance goes. One of the things Windows is not very good at is software RAID. Uh, you can do it, but the performance is typically not very good. Um, and it may or may not be a problem depending on if I'd want to do RAID 5. That'll be another discussion we'll have. Um, I, I've taken a bit of a different approach to how I'm storing my data and I have multiple redundancy now, so I'm not so sure if, uh, if RAID's going to be needed. But if it is, Windows is probably not my best choice there. Uh, two other options I'm looking at is uh, FreeNAS, um, which is a very popular operating system for home home NAS users, that actually does have a, a reasonably decent software RAID option, um, or I could use hardware RAID, that's another option as well. Um, one of the things that's kind of giving me pause with free NAS though, is uh, it seems to uh, use a lot of memory for, um, for its operation. I think the, the estimates are you need one gigabyte of RAM per terabyte of storage, and I'm looking at building this thing out to anywhere between 16 and 24 terabytes. Um, once we get at that point, we're no longer um, at our, our low price point for this uh, for this project. The other uh, the other thing that gives me a little pause is a lot of folks with free NAS are saying how the operating system seems to require almost um, ECC memory, and it's not the cost that I'm worried about there. Um, but you know, I run other servers without ECC memory; they don't seem to crash. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to find out what's different about FreeNAS. So again, I'm brand new to FreeNAS, so I got to do my homework on this. Um, feel free to leave comments and let me know what you think about that. Uh, the third option I'm looking at, and I'm sort of leaning toward it at this point, is uh, Unraid. Um, it seems to have a lower memory footprint than FreeNAS. I also sort of like the way the file system works, whereas you can put um, a lot of drives in there. They're just different sizes. It'll just keep appending to them. Uh, and you have a, a single parity drive. So you get a lot of the um, same advantages that you would get with a, a NAS system, or sorry, a RAID system, whereas you got redundancy if a drive fails. Um, what you don't get, however, because remember when, when we're doing this with Unraid, we've got multiple drives and we're appending data to it. Uh, and the nice part about that is if any drive fails, you still got the parity drive to rebuild it. But if two of them failed, the data is still stored all together on a single drive. So you could pull data off whatever data remains on the remaining drives, you can pull that off. You don't get that with a striped system such as RAID 5, where it puts, um, let's say you had five drives in a RAID 5 array, 
uh, we put one fifth of the data on each of the drive, or one fourth of the data on each of the drive, plus a plus a parity stripe. Being really simple about it, it's it's kind of more complicated than that. But if you if you were to lose two drives in a RAID five configuration, you're likely not getting your data back. But the advantage of striping, which you don't get with the uh, unraid philosophy, is you've got basically if you have five drives and you're doing a read, you've got five spindles giving you data at once. So in theory, not always in practice. But in theory, a RAID 5 array would be a lot faster than reading off a single drive. Again, in theory. So, um, so there's things we can deal with with that as well. Again, I would love uh, I would love if Windows had perfect RAID performance. The part that kind of frustrates me, and I, I started playing with storage spaces on Windows 10 and ran into the same thing. If I actually use a parity stripe, which is their equivalent of RAID 5, uh, the performance is glacial. And Microsoft's excuse is, well, it takes a lot to calculate the parity bit. And I believe it does. However, uh, on my QNAP uh, NAS I just had, which had RAID 5 in it, uh, it only had a fairly low power Celeron dual core processor in it. And I was still able to read and write at over 100 megabits a second in RAID 5. Um, on Windows, on a... Uh, on an Intel i Core i7 4790, um, four gigahertz processor, I was getting almost USB two speeds when I tried it. So maybe we'll do another. Maybe we'll do a performance comparison. So I, I have a. I, I just think the the Microsoft storage spaces is flawed, and maybe I'll experiment with that with Windows 2012 as well. But anyway. I'm talking too much. I'm going on about the different options we've got. Let's get the hardware put together. We can deal with the software at the other end of this, all right? So all I'm gonna do in this video is talk about the hardware choices I picked, and then we'll do another video of building it out. An overview of the components we chose. We have a motherboard, some memory. We chose an AMD processor. We have a power supply, and we have a single hard drive now, although I do plan to expand that into multiple hard drives once we get the system built out. For the power supply, I went with an EVGA 500 watt. Nothing real special about it other than the sale price. I ended up getting this thing for $40. If you remember, the purpose of this project is to build a fully functional NAS for fairly inexpensively. For the system I'm building, this power supply is more than adequate. It's also fully modular, so I will not have too many extra cables just laying around. It'll make cable management very nice. For a motherboard, we ended up going with an ASRock A88M-G3.1. Uh, this supports the AMD APU line of processors. The uh, reason I went with this was twofold. One, I got it on sale for $30. Can't beat that with a stick. Uh, second, it has eight SATA ports. And remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to build a NAS for storage. So the extra SATA ports will certainly come in handy as the system grows out. For our processor, and this is probably going to be one of the more controversial decisions I've made, we went with the A67400K processor, and I got this one for, let me check my receipt here, I got this one for $50. So this was a fairly inexpensive buy as well. It's a dual core uh, processor with AMD, they call it an APU, which means it also has a quad core graphics chip built into it, which we're really not going to use for, uh, for our NAS build here. But it should have more than enough power for what we're trying to do as far as uh, just running a, a storage server. Um, one of the things it does not support, however, is ECC memory. So that may be a problem if we decide to go with free NAS. Again, still doing my homework with this. But for purposes of what I'm trying to do, build an inexpensive NAS server, this should be more than adequate. For memory, we just went with a eight gigabyte ballistic kit. Nothing really special to talk about this, uh, just a dual SIM. Uh, motherboard supports more, I can always add more later. So I believe it's got four SIM slots and a motherboard. So we'll start out with eight gigs, we'll see how that goes. We can always add more later. For storage, we're starting out with an HGST DeskStar NAS. 
Uh, I went with the four terabyte drive. I've had several of these in the past and I absolutely love this drive line. Um, unlike, unlike the Western Digital Reds, which spin at 5200 RPM, these actually spin at 7200 RPM. And I know, I know uh, on a NAS drive, it's typically the network that's the bottleneck, but it's still nice to have that extra speed. Um, HGST, ironically, is actually owned by Western Digital at this point. But again, they, they've had a good price point. I think I got this for $150 um, on sale. Always look for the sales. Um, so I'm going to put this in and get the system up and running, and I'll probably expand this out to four or five drives when this is done. But again, great value for these drives. I always had good luck with it. Oh, I was really looking to try to buy uh, one of the five or six terabyte drives that are out there, but they're still still at too much of a premium price point for, for what I'm trying to get at at this point. So I ended up sticking with a four terabyte for now. Um, eventually those prices will come down, especially now that Seagate's putting out eight terabyte drives. And, and by the way, uh, as far as those eight terabyte drives go, I actually experimented with them a bit. They are really, really not good performers right now. Hopefully that'll get better over time, as technology tends to do. Uh, but for now, again, sticking with this 4 terabyte HDSD DeskStar NAS. And also, when we're de dealing with the budget considerations here, um, your hard drives are where you're going to be spending the most money on. Uh, there's no real way around that right now. But if you're building a storage server, that's also sort of the heart of what you're trying to get at. So, uh, so if you've got to spend your money somewhere, that's where it needs to be. Uh, don't scrimp too much on the drives. Uh, you want reliability and you want performance, in my opinion, in that order. Now this is the part that kind of holds everything together, our system case, and you're probably looking at this going, wait a minute, that's not a server case, and you'd be absolutely correct. This is a Fractal Design Define S case. It's very similar to the Fractal Design um, R5, except that uh, the drive cages are a bit different. This is more optimized for cooling, uh, more optimized for cable management and it's really designed as a high-end PC case slash gamers case. So why did I get this for the NAS? Well I got it because I kind of just really wanted it. It's a nice case, I can't wait to use it and um, eventually my NAS is going to go on a rack in my uh, server room and at that point I'm going to take out probably the innards and put it in a rack mounted case. But I saw this case and I wanted to get it and I kind of wanted to do a build with it. So my other case is a, for my primary system is an NZXT H440, which is also a beautiful case. So I really wanted to kind of compare these. So this was sort of um, my one indulgence in this project. And it did drive up the cost a bit. I think the case I got it on sale was like $95, which is a good price, but certainly I could have got a case for uh, less to do the, to do the job. Now, if there's any drawbacks to this case whatsoever, it would be the lack of drive bays. Now, on the upside, what's nice about it, and if you're building a gaming system or a primary use system, if you look here in this uh, picture with my H440 uh, Razor case in the background there, but on the desk, if you look at this, you'll see there's three drive bays on the back side of the case. So this is not where you where it's typically located, which would be on the, the primary side with your motherboard. These are kind of hidden in the back in the cable management area. Um, so there's three drives on the left side of that picture and you'll see two drives for two and a half inch SSDs to the right. And this is sort of a close up of where those two SSDs are. I kind of like the fact that the drives are hidden, but if you're asking yourself, hey, this is a storage server, where are you gonna put all the drives? Uh, you hit it right on the head. This is going to be a problem once we get past uh, three drives on the system. And that's fully anticipated. And again, I'm just going to use this to get the system up and running, and I'll probably transfer it into a more traditional server case later. But again, I couldn't resist buying this case, and it's certainly enough to get the project started, and it'll look kind of nice. Okay, so here we are with our summary. Uh, we got the AMD A6 7400 uh, CPU for $50 on sale. We got the Ballistics 8GB DDR3 RAM on two sticks for $35. The ASRock A88M G3.1 motherboard was a low $30. 
The EVGA 500 watt power supply cost us $40. Uh, the big ticket item on this project was the HGST 4 terabyte NAS drive. That was $165. And finally, our one indulgence in this project was the Fractal Design Define S case, which is $95, bringing this build to a total of $415, which is not bad when you consider that NAS appliances typically start out almost at $500 for either a QNAP or a Synology, and that does not include your drives. So, of course, if we'd go with Windows, we would have to factor that operating system in here. But if we go with uh, free NAS, um, that would add nothing to the cost if we went with Unraid. Uh, even if we purchased it, cost is minimal. So, with that said, we're going to get started on building this the next time we get together, and we'll see how this turns out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, I welcome the comments. Please leave them in the, in the space below. Uh, if you liked the video, please go ahead and click the like. Uh, looking forward to your feedback.